I would love it if you could give us the state of play. What is happening in cyberspace at this stage of war in terms of cyber attacks on Ukraine and on Russian targets? Yes, hi, Emily. Great to see you again today, uh, certainly despite the circumstances. So we are closely monitoring activity that's occurring in Ukraine as well as abroad. Uh, in some cases, what we're seeing is what we would expect. So activity targeted at uh, critical infrastructure and government uh, websites within the Ukraine. We're seeing web defacements. We're seeing wiper malware that's intended to uh, conduct destructive attacks. Uh, what we're anticipating next will be attacks in a broader sphere. So potentially targeted towards Europe and towards the United States and specifically focused on financial services as well as critical infrastructure. So what kind of increasing chatter are you hearing about in terms of cyber attacks on the United States, what, you know, whether it's businesses or other entities? Well, so I think that I made a comment about destructive malware attacks, and that's an area that we're certainly focused on. I think the cyber uh, world and many of us defenders are certainly prepared for those types of attacks because they're not unprecedented in the sense we've seen them before. Uh, financial services, critical infrastructure, energy, water and power supply, those are all areas that we would anticipate that as attacks in the kinetic sphere escalate, we think that we will continue to see those types of attacks targeted specifically towards uh, those entities with the intent of taking services offline, causing disruption, mm -hmm. potentially in retaliation for the sanctions being levied. So give us your take on the threat level. Where is it highest? What kinds of businesses, hospitals, healthcare systems, are they at risk? Uh, potentially. So we're certainly seeing that within the Ukraine itself. And you, uh, we have that concern that we may see that escalate as we move forward within the uh, the next stages of this attack. So, uh, you know, many of us are familiar with the NotPetya attacks, which occurred uh, within Ukraine years ago. While I'm not uh, convinced that we are going to see an exact duplication, I think any businesses that have their international organizations with entities or ties to Ukraine certainly need to be prepared to uh, be segmenting their network, be identifying and detecting uh, this type of activity in advance, and really be prepared to detect and respond quickly to the types of attacks we might see moving forward. Now, one of the world's most successful ransomware groups was targeted for aligning itself with Russia. Do you think we're going to see more of this? Well, I think uh, the space is incredibly dynamic. You're seeing certainly a lot of emotions that are generated, rightfully so, from what we're seeing going on. And so from that perspective, certainly the attacks that occurred against the Conti ransomware gang that you're referring to, I think anytime there's a significant leak of data, we're going to make sure that there's information that can be learned from it and that we can better secure our defenses moving forward based on the information that's learned from that leak. And obviously, it's no secret that Russia is a stronghold uh, for hackers and state-sponsored attacks. How can that sort of hub stand up to attacks from around the world? Uh, well, I think that's uh, going to be interesting to see how that plays out, Emily, right? We've seen uh, attackers really leverage information against one another. We've seen a lot of organizations really unified uh, based on uh, this invasion. And one of the things that I'm heartened by, actually, is that I've never seen the cybersecurity community come together uh, more from the perspective of sharing threat intelligence. We have rival organizations who are sharing information very rapidly, certainly a lot of of information being shared between the private and public sectors. And uh, I've never seen it at the speed with which we're seeing it. So I'm cautiously optimistic that that is going to help in this circumstance. So what do you think the next stage is? How do you see cyber warriors, whether from Ukraine, around the world, or inside Russia itself, upping the ante? Well, I think you're going to see a lot of organizations really banding together to share that information. Our teams are working 24-7 around the clock to make sure that we are understanding specifically what's going on on the ground. Uh, but I think as the kinetic warfare on the ground plays out, then uh, many of us anticipated that cyber would have been the uh, primary domain used already. We're not seeing that as much yet as we expected. So I anticipate that we're going to see that more moving forward, depending upon how the ground war plays out over the coming days and weeks.